It's the golden years. I'm delighted to say choosing the golden year for us today is Shirley Kemp. Good day to you. How are you? Good day to you. I'm very well. How are you? Oh, fantastic. Lovely Good. to see you. Good, yeah. thank you. And your year, well, we're going to go back a few years for this. I'm What's your special years. year? I've chosen 1977. Right. Well, you must have been a tiny child. I was. I think I was 15 years okay. old, teenager. Right. It's. It tends to be what people think of most when they have a golden year because it's a coming of age, isn't it, really? Coming of age, And yeah. that's what happened for you. And music has a huge impact on you when you're younger. I grew up with uh, older brothers and sisters, so I'd be listening to Bowie, the stylistics. My dad was a huge Beatles fan. So I had so much music around me. And then what happens is when you're young, you connect to a song and you're identifying and it's, it's singing all the emotions that you're going through. So I just used to get so lost in music. It just expressed so much for me. Right. And obviously at that stage, you, you probably weren't thinking about any kind of career in music. No, but I used to watch Shop of the Pops and want to be a Pan's People. All right. Yes. Okay. Have you got the moves still? <laughs> I've got the moves, yeah. I'll bet. <laughs> <laughs> and the outfits. <laughs> so at that time, what were you doing? Were you still at school? At I was still at school, but I was kind of in a bit of a going, just about to go in a punky phase. Um, I, yeah, I, I must have been at school. I just used to love to try and go and see live bands everywhere. So... Yeah, it's just music was, was really important to me. Yeah. Uh, so let's hear the first choice that you've gone for. Now, it's the Alessi Brothers. Why have you gone for this? I love this song so much. I want to sing this song. I want to re-record this song. So the 70s reminds me of the long, hot summer. And I know there was a long, hot summer of 76. Flare jean, I, like the fashion, everything. It just brings everything back to me. And I love this song. It just makes me feel light and happy. And the, it brings back that mood that I, when summer was around in uh, when I was younger. It's got a lovely summery kind of easy feel it's about easy, it, hasn't it? It's yeah. easy, yeah, and it's kind of got a little underlying that it's the, the, the double bass on. I just love the way that's going and the, the high vocals, um, everything about it is just, just lovely. Yeah, slightly jazzy too, isn't it? Yeah, a bit of a yeah. bit of tinge about that. Yeah. And of course, you've you've had your, your jazz record I recently, have. you and Martin. Yes, I would yeah. like to do another one as well because yeah. like, it's the most enjoyable songs. It's just something really easy about singing jazz Are these songs rates. they never kind of go away do they i mean they come in and out of fashion slightly but they're Absolutely. always there and people always appreciate the music them. won't go away that's the great thing now it's just there forever and and whatever mood you're in or you know time 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 of life you're in you just can reflect back and play music and you can learn so much about music from previous Absolutely. eras can't you? yeah it's a great yeah. thing it's a, a delight to have the internet now for us it's uh a learning resource, definitely. So, 1977, um, were you thinking about a job at that point? Um, well, I was a horsey girl. Mm. I loved horse. My passion when I was younger was horses. So all I thought was, I'm just going to work at the riding stables so I can be with my horse. That's all the only interest I, I had. It was either music or horses. And I didn't have any hope of being in the music business because I didn't know anyone in the music business or have any idea how you'd get in the music business. So um, my, I just had my sights set on working with horses. But that didn't quite work out, did it? It didn't because when I was about 18, I got hay fever and it was so bad. I couldn't be around horses anymore. And it was such a transition in my life because everything that I'd known and that I was confident about was taken away from me. And it left me really, really depressed, really lost as a teenager. Um, no hope, no qualifications for anything because I wasn't very good at school didn't enjoy school um but fate had plans and I my brother I was so low my brother actually said I let's go to the pub and I thought well that's not gonna help is it why would I want I didn't drink so why would I want to go to a pub so I do go to the pub I have my Chris and coca-cola sat there whilst he's chatting to all his mates and I thought I'm just gonna go to the loo and, and it's, it is that sliding doors moment I come out of the toilet doors open that door and then I hear hello Shirley and it was the boy from school and I say to him how come you remember my name because he he was in the year below and he said you were the punky girl you were so cool you had all the earrings in and I just used to really look up to you and it was Andrew Ridgely and then we started talking about our favorite bands and we ta started talking about music we swapped phone numbers then he says do you remember Yog from school and I'm saying no I don't who was that Anyway, so we drive over, because I've got a car, and we drive to George's house, which isn't far from ours, 
And I remembered that boy with the curly hair because he had such a mop of curly hair. Now, this is another thing about fate. My form room was the music room, which was on stage. So you kind of got two little clues there on stage in the music room. And this is the girl who said she got no connection to music. Yeah. And George was standing outside. I remember, not that I knew him at all, didn't know his name, but he uh, was the curly haired boy with the violin case. And we would kind of stay in the classroom a bit longer so they couldn't get in. So when he opened his front door, I thought, oh, no, it's the boy with the curly hair. He might hate me. <laughs> so um, and that was my meeting with the boys kind of re, yeah. you know, in our relationship. And that led to, that quite, led to quite, quite a few years of... Quite a few uh, years of the music business. Indeed, indeed. Right, next choice is Fleetwood Mac and Dreams. Yeah, I mean, this was this was my older sister. She loved Fleetwood Mac and she used to dress very boho and go to Kensington Market and buy the clothes. And I remember going with her and watching her put her makeup on and it felt very sophisticated. So when she used to play um, Fleetwood Mac... I, yeah, I just loved it. It just kind of gave this aura of this boho, laid back. And I love Stevie Nicks' voice. It's so kind of almost not singing, but she's singing. It's such her own style of voice. So it kind of reminds me of how I admired my older sister. Uh, and Shirley, you've got Rose Royce on this list now. Oh, yeah, Car Wash. Oh, I love this song. I mean, I really love Rose Royce because they had uh, Wishing on a Star as well. But Car Wash was also, I kind of had this obsession with America when I was younger because a lot of the TV shows I'd watch were all American. And I just thought, you know, like, we, I don't even know if we had a car wash in England at that point in that style. And they were kind of round. And I just remember going to wash my dad's car, playing, <laughs> playing the uh, car wash, thinking I was in the video. And uh, so, yeah, I've got kind of fun memories of that song. It was all good preparation for all the All good preparation, absolutely. <laughs> rehearsing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you got into music and the, the rest, you know, we, we know that, that's the rest is gone history, on. Yeah. Uh, and of course now we have Wham! The Singles Echoes from the Edge of Heaven. It, it's great to have all that back together again. In a, in a, and it's such a lovely yeah. box set. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. so well done. I'm scared to open it, actually. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just need the record player to find the record player to play it all on. But it is lovely memories of, I mean, I miss those days where you had a record cover and sleeve and yeah. you're reading about everyone that was involved and artwork. Uh, I love that tangible thing about albums and music. So that's so lovely to have that box set that you can actually pull it all out. It's like a little, you know, afternoon, just pull it because there's quite a lot in there. So yeah. uh yeah, that is, I, I think it's a lovely box set. We need to get a Pepsi and Shirley box set as well, we do. won't we? We need to get one, yeah. That's... It won't be as big as the one there. It'll still be a good old, <laughs> good old size. <laughs> well, yeah. That's coming next. <laughs> Commodore's Easy. Now, tell Easy. me about that one. Sunday mornings at my house, my dad was always in a very different mood. During the week, he was always shouting, screaming, getting to work, don't lie in bed, get up. He hated people being lazy. And he changed on a Sunday... And he would, that's when all his records would come out. And he had a big radiogram yeah. and all his vinyls would cover the living room floor. And I used to actually ice skate on his vinyls. <laughs> I used to get them on and go around. Um, <laughs> but I remember this song as a reflection of thinking about my dad. It, it changed his mood. Sunday mornings, that was my dad. Yeah. So it, still to this day as an adult, when I play it on a Sunday morning or just think about easy on Sunday morning, it just gives me a really kind of nice vibe, nice relaxed vibe. Take it easy. Don't worry. Don't let anybody skate on your vinyl. That's right. No, no. <laughs> and Shirley, your last one, Rod Stewart, Tonight's the Night. Wow. So listen, I'm only a young girl, but I remember thinking Rod Stewart was so sexy and my mum really loved him because my mum was called Maggie and he had uh, Maggie May. So my mum kind of turned me into a Rod Stewart fan. But it's kind of that wonderment of being turning into an adult and Rod Stewart is just so cool and uh, it's just one of those songs that I just absolutely loved as a, as a young girl. It's quite a steamy song. It's a, a bit of a steamy girl. song, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I've got to be careful on that. So yeah. uh, <laughs> don't want to get too steamy about it. But yeah. Uh, Shirley, it's great to have talked to you about your uh, fabulous year. Thank You're having you. a pretty good year now again, aren't you? Yeah, Tim? it's been such fun reliving it and, and also hearing everyone's great kind of like saying, oh, that was my youth and that you feel like you were a part of someone's life, which you don't realise when you're actually in that moment. You're yeah. kind of just trying to do your life and get on with your life. And uh, 
my my boyfriend then was Martin in Spandau Ballet. So my whole time memory of Wham was a lot of trying to get on aeroplanes to go and see my boyfriend to get away from Wham to go to get to Martin. <laughs> so I've just it was a chaotic time, and I don't really think I took it in how important that time was for other people. Yeah, a, a massive time for yeah. lots and lots of people. So, so it's lovely. Be proud of being. Part I am of it. now proud. <laughs> <laughs> Shirley, great to talk to you. Thanks and so you. much. Thank you, Ken. Thanks.